Hi, my name's Lee Pond. And since our last trip to Pittsford Reservoir, we've had a few emails back about the washing line. We mentioned it a few times while we were fishing, and I don't think we, had that, we didn't really describe on how to use it. So I'm gonna give you a really brief description on how it goes together and what to use, and then we're gonna get on the water and give it a go and try and see if we can catch some fish. The basic principle of the washing line is, is two boobies, one on the top dropper and one on the point. Top dropper booby, which is this one here, which is a two-tone booby, size 10, pink eyes, real attractor fly. That obviously sits on the surface. And then on the point, we have another booby. Hang on. Let's try and find it. I'll give you the spacings of these flies in a minute. But let's just show you what we've got on the point, which is the furthest one away and the one closest to us. This is what they call a JCB booby. Not many people know about these flies. Well, this particular one is a competition fly designed by Mark Rooney, who's a digger driver. And the reason it's a JCB booby is because at the time he had these big eyes and this flashback white flashback on the back of it and obviously the colour he thought it looked like his JCB so that's how it got the nicknames it's funny how these flies get their nicknames so you've got that on the point and then in the middle we've got two more nymphs doesn't matter what you're using as far as the nymphs are concerned it depends on the time of the year where you're fishing what the fish are on etc but today I've put on a UV cruncher that's on a size 10 again, just to get it down a little bit quicker. UV cruncher this time of the year always works really, really well. The third fly I'm using is a black dalback with jungle cock eyes. It's probably one of my favourite nymphs, regardless of the time of year. That always takes fish, no matter where and when. It's going to catch them today, I can tell you that. So, that's it. That's what we got on. We've got the four flies. Let me show you the spacings. Let's get some line out off this reel a minute. That'll give you a good indication of how you should space these out. Put them on down on the floor. Now, there's the end of the fly line here. Can you see that? Got it? So, so my first fly is one good armful. So it's, a, it's probably six foot, I would say, to the first fly, which is the booby, yeah? The next fly, which is just under an armful, just under an armful. So again, around about four foot. That's to my black dale back. But as I say, you can use any nymph. It doesn't matter. Whatever the fish are actually on on that day. Again, the next fly, about the same spacing again as the, the one before. Around about four foot again. That's my UV cruncher. And then on the last one, a good armful. Basically that should work out around about 22 foot roughly. And of course you can always judge how, what sort of length of leader you've got by using your rod. Pull the fly line all the way through to the top and then just hook the line round and you can see whether you're up to 20 foot because your rod's 10. Now what that actually does, the idea of this is that the washing line speaks for itself. It's exactly, it does exactly what it says it's on the tin. You've got a booby suspended on the surface, floating on the surface. Then your line drops below it, just like a washing line. So you've got that one on the point, and then you've got your two, two nymphs suspended below it. So that's your, that one, that's your next one. And obviously your last booby is suspended on the top. So basically, it's giving you that sort of effect in the water. Now you can fish that absolutely static, literally just cast it out and leave it because your nymphs are working. Sometimes the trout will just come up and take those boobies static anyway. But I find that it's normally better sometimes just to give them a quick pull. As soon as you cast out, give it one, two quick pulls and it just pops those boobies on the surface and it attracts the fish, it always does. If there's a fish around there, he'll let pop and they'll just come around and just investigate. Now they might not take that booby, they might have seen those like six or seven times before. Different angles, different conditions. But they'll see those nymphs 
move away from that booby and bang, you got one on. Simple as that. But it sounds simple. Well, we've just gone back up to the top end of the drift. We just fished this whole length of yacht club frontage down with very little success to be quite honest, just that one fish. Um, a few fish started to move just as we was getting halfway down the drift. And then just as quickly as they was there, they disappeared again. But I guess that's fishing. I've changed tactics to this washing line. Um, I've not had a touch on it so far, but I'm gonna persevere with it. We're just gonna do one more short drift here. If it doesn't work out, oh, <laughs> uh, oh, oh, he's back on again. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, isn't that just typical? <laughs> well, there you go. Maybe we'll persevere here just a little longer. This obviously seems to be the spot. Just as I was just hanging those flies there, boom! He took it. It's not a very big fish. But uh, it's an indication that they are here. Mm. We swallowed that. Nowhere near the same size as the last one. Camera. <laughs> this could be a fatality. Ooh, he's a stocky, all right. That's a shame. I think. Oh, lucky fish. Go on, away you go. Yeah, go on, go on. He's going, he's going to go. He's going to go. We fished this whole area with the, uh, with the bung and, and, and never had a touch on it. Whereas as soon as we'd gone over to this washing line, took two fish almost sort of straight away really. So it just shows you, it's just, it's not necessarily, I mean, same sort of flies, all right, that one was on a booby, admittedly, but it's just the presentation, I guess. Just want to make sure that, you know, these flies turn over. Nothing worse than it going in a heap on the floor, or on the water even, I'm at the floor. Okay, I've got a feeling there's a little pod of fish here. I'm just gonna fish that real slow. I mean, that fish that took that booby just then, that took that almost, well, it was static. I had a little tug from it, left it on the hang, and it just devoured it, literally, right down the back of its throat. Wanted it. I'm just surprised I'm not getting any takes halfway back. Oh. Oh, there he is. I was just going to say there's a fish behind me, but it just took that. Excellent. Now that's, I don't know what that's on at the moment. Oh, that's a good fish. That's going, whoa, that's really pulling that is. <laughs> Look at that. Whoa, it's going to take me onto the reel in a minute. Whoa, stay on, stay on, stay on. That's a proper fish that is. Look at that. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're on the reel, we're on the reel. I don't want to play them on the reel particularly. I'm so used to playing them by hand. It's a good fish though. I was right about this little area. That's going well. Wow, that is going well. <laughs> it's taking me back onto the reel again. Now it's either a really, really good one, a really good one, or we got him up the arse. One of the two. Oh, he's coming towards me real fast. Done the job keeping up with him. Oh, he's still there, he's still there. I don't think it is hooked up the backside. Oh, 
I have to chase it in the boat in a minute. <laughs> This is not the type of fish you can bully in. You know, when they're, they're as strong and as fit as this, you've just got to take your time. I'm just feeling below the surface, just shaking his head, trying to get rid of that hook. Shaking it from side to side, I can feel it all the way down the line. Jag, jag, jag. Oh, he's on there. Do you know, it's really not that big, that fish. That's incredible. It's not. I can't do anything with it though. Look, it's running. It's not that big. It's not bad, but it's not huge. It's not a five pounder or anything like that. That's what you've got to be careful is you don't get the top dropper stuck in the top eye of the rod. Because if you do that, Game's over. This fish will just run and snap my eight pound line like cotton. Trust me. He's getting there, but wow, he's still got some power. My God, these fish are so fit. They're on steroids, I'm telling you. He's <laughs> just going and going. It's a rainbow, that's for sure. I will need to stand up to get him in. Oh no, it's a good fish, it is a good fish. It looks about four. Look what he's done to my droppers. Made a mess of those. Well, what a fight. What a fight. Oh, that is a good fish. That is a good fish. It's bigger than what I thought it was, actually. Oh yeah, she's nice. Nice fish. Very nice fish. That's four pounds. Yeah, it's about four. It doesn't look so big there, but when you see it below the boat, it's just hooked in the side of his mouth as well. Dodgy position. Got to be tired now, surely. It's been on for a good five minutes. That's really just in the side of his mouth. Horrible position, don't like it. I'm gonna net this fish when I can. I'm not gonna mess around with it. Oh yeah. Have you just seen the net? Come on, come on. Oh, you're mine! What a lovely fish, look at that. Let's take the uh, hook out in the net, leave him in the water. Oh, that's beautiful. See the booby in the side of his mouth there. Oh, that's a lovely fish. Beautiful Pittsford rainbow. That's close to being four, just under I would say but completely fit. I defy anyone to, to tell you anything different that rainbow trout fish in this time of the year is not the best in the world. Let's slip that one back. We'll let him recover for a minute or two. Oh, oh yes.